lady really hey guys what's up today we're getting into it we're really oh almost dropped this we're really getting into it i just made this chai i need to mix it up still but i wanted to save the satisfaction for us to experience together don't mind leif like working on the if that's him i'm actually gonna lose my mind because i told him i was filming a video and he went out to like clean the garage Sir, maybe it's our neighbor though, I don't know. Okay, anyway, today we're doing a little Q&A, updated, casual, chit-chat video. Maybe getting deep, maybe getting a little juicy. I don't know, but I think so. I did a little question box on my Instagram story. First question, why didn't you go to Coachella? Um, just cause I didn't really want to, I don't know. I've been one time to Coachella with Chelsea. I vlogged it, I think, um, a couple years ago and it was really fun. I just, I don't know. I feel like if I if a group of my friends was like, I want let's go to Coachella, I would totally be down. It was a really fun experience, but it's also not like something that I live for that's like a tradition in my life. It's a very like chaotic, kind of overwhelming environment that's fun, but it's not like my first choice of how I want to spend time. So it's also like very expensive to like go and stay and get outfits. I don't know. I just um didn't like feel drawn to it this year. So maybe I will in the future, we'll see. Okay, what were the first things that made you start to question your faith? I think this is a good starting point to talk about and I keep saying this, but like I could talk about this subject for five hours straight. And so sometimes I just don't even begin speaking about it because I feel like it has so many nuanced layers that I'm like, I couldn't possibly explain to you my take on, on this in like, even a 30 minute long video like it would literally need to be hours and it would need to be almost like a conversation you know what i mean but putting that aside i'll try to answer some of these religion questions um let's like backtrack a little i have never been super um bought in and like super into religion in high school i had to go to a seminary it's a class you take in high school it doesn't count as a school credit but pretty much if you're mormon like you go to seminary i never liked going to seminary i remember like being annoyed to go to like the seminary graduation like i just didn't i've never been super honestly like obsessed with it there's something called girls camp when you're between the ages of, of like 12 and 18 in the church where you go to camp with the girls your age in your like community and i went i think once or twice and like i hated it so much i literally came home i was like mom please never make me do that again like i don't want to go and she's like okay so she didn't make me go looking back it makes a lot of sense with how the church and all of it has never really fit into like seamlessly into my life or into my soul like it's never resonated very deeply with me which i honestly always thought was a problem with me and it would make me really upset like the way i was was not normal and it just came so easily to other people and for me i just like couldn't connect with it and it, it like really upset me um because i would try really really hard to like read my scriptures and do everything like correct and perfect so that i would feel strongly about it and i just never did it all makes sense now why i felt the way i did i think but anyway the first thing that i remember having like a vivid thought and being like wait that doesn't make sense to me at all was when i realized that in the lds church you are expected to pay tithing and tithing is giving 10 percent of your income to the church and i always paid religiously i always paid all my my like an honest tithe like i paid 10 percent of my income for years to the church and there were some like policies and things that i didn't actually agree with within the church that kind of made me a little like wary of it's like, if I don't agree with these certain things, why am I giving money to this organization? It kind of felt a little weird to me. But I remember having this vivid thought where I was like, the ultimate goal with the religion is to go to heaven, go to the celestial kingdom, which is the highest degree of heaven, and be with your family forever. That is the ultimate goal of life on this earth. And that's the point of being here is that's what you're taught growing up. And that might be similar to a lot of other religions, but in order to get to this highest level in heaven there are a lot of things that you have to do and a lot of rules you have to abide by or else you're not like eligible basically and so whenever i talk about being mormon how it's restrictive i can literally hear people in my head from my past being like no but the rules the regulations like they're only there to for your safety they're only there to keep you on track 
But once you no longer um, subscribe to the belief that like you have to do all these cert very specific things to get into heaven, the rules become very meaningless. Does that make sense? Like if for me, if I now no longer believe I have to do all these certain things, then like what's the point of me following these very specific rules? But okay, back to the thought. I remember thinking, so in order to go to heaven and be with my family forever in the highest degree, whatever, I have to go to the temple, which is like a sacred part of... The religion that you go but in order to get to go into the temple you have to be a full tithe payer which means you have to give 10 percent of your income aka you have to pay 10 percent of your income to get to heaven even though i knew that really breaking that down was one of the things that just made absolutely no sense to me because i do not believe that that's how god works that you have to follow stringent rules that you have to give 10 percent of your money and it's very specific to go to heaven with your family I don't agree with that and I don't believe that at all. So when things just don't make sense, it's like your brain has to make it make sense in order to function and live. And so that's what I was doing a lot. I'd be like, okay, well that I don't feel good about, but I'm gonna trust that like, I don't really need to do that in order to go to heaven. Like maybe that just doesn't connect with me, but I could still do other things within the church, I can still make it make sense for me and like I can still stay. And it just was thing after thing like that where I'm like, okay, I don't wanna agree with that, but that's fine. Like I can still be in it. And like after so many things happen, you just realize you don't agree with it and you don't, this is my, by the way, very personally for me, this is how I felt. I don't connect with it. I don't subscribe to it. I don't get it. Um, it's not making sense. I don't feel peace. I feel so much disconnect. What am I supposed to do with that? Like, and the answer that the church would give you and people within the church is to try harder, be more faithful and read your scriptures more. And it's like, I've done all of, I really have tried, I feel like my best to make it all make sense. And it just doesn't for me. And I used to be so jealous of people who it just made sense for. This is how I felt. I just want to be Mormon. My whole family's Mormon, all my friends. Were, why can't I just like it? Why can't I just like love it and feel so connected to it? Why do I have to be like feeling this push and pull I don't want this. Like, I want it to be easy. I would pray so much to God being like, please just like let it, can it just, can you like confirm that it's true to me? Like, I just want to be in this. Um, another question that I got that I thought was really good to answer. How do you feel like your relationship with God has changed over the past year? The truth is that I feel like it has gotten so much stronger. And to be honest with you, I used to hear people say this. I used to hear people distance themselves from organized religion and say this exact thing. They'd be like, honestly, I feel closer to God now. And I did not believe them at all. I was just like, that's not possible. Like, I don't get why they're saying that. They're like trying to prove a point. Like, no, actually I'm better now. But I do feel that very, very deeply. Um, I feel like my relationship with myself, my relationship with God, with something bigger than me is actually much, much stronger than it ever was when I was like, going to church every week. And I don't even really know how to explain that or why that is. I just think I'm so much more connected to, to myself now. And I still pray all the time. And I will literally ask God, like, if I'm not on the right path, please help me because I wanna do what's right in this life. Like I want to make the right decisions for me and for my future family. And like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna like, I don't know, be evil and wrong and like making bad decisions. Uh, cause I think that's such a misconception is like if you're not a part of the church anymore Like you just want to be worldly. You just want to like make You want to sin you want to like drink coffee and get tattoos and it's like that's not it That's not for me. That has nothing to do with it Like yeah, I don't like the restrictions because I don't resonate with them What I want is to live an authentic life. That's my only goal in this world is to live authentically and true to how I feel inside and I believe that God gives us our moral compass and our gut instincts for a reason. And I believe that we have everything inside of us that we need. Knowing that my, my relationship to God and with myself is like so much more authentic and, and it feels so, so much more right to me. That being said, I still don't know fully what I believe in. I don't have it all figured out. I don't think I ever will. And I, don't want to swing on the pendulum to where I was, I believed in this like, you know, high demand, like extreme religion. And then I swing and I'm like, nope, now I don't. And now this is correct. I don't actually think that. I don't think that I know what's best. 
for anyone else. I just think I know how I feel. And that's all I'm trying to do. I think it's easy when you like leave the church or you just don't vibe with it anymore. Like for friends or family or for people who are still in the church for them to feel like you're personally attacking them. Like they taught you these things and now you don't like them anymore or like you don't believe in them anymore. And so it really messes with their mind. I think it makes them feel very like just sad and devastated. And there's a lot of emotions that come on both sides um, with this topic. I think that just everyone is valid in how they feel and that's that's actually what I've realized too Is that even my friends and family who are still like very much believing Mormons like they want to be understood All of us want to be understood and validated in our choice, right? And so I've felt for so long like I just wanted validation from people in my life that I was like doing the right thing And I've realized I'm probably never going to get that validation from them if they're like very bought into this religion They're probably not going to agree fully with what I'm doing, but that's that's actually very much okay and just like I want to be validated they also do and so them believing really hardcore in their religion and like it brings them a lot of peace they really love it they wish that I could understand that and that I would validate them in that do you know what I mean there's a lot of like oh my gosh like I said I've already been talking for 20 minutes on this one topic like there are so many layers to this and there are a lot of issues that I see with the church that I don't agree with and ultimately I just don't I don't feel good about it so that's that's the truth that's how i feel someone asked if i would like go to a christian church and to be honest i i think that the whole organized religion thing is the thing that i don't i don't vibe with anymore i don't necessarily want to like switch churches it's not that you know what i mean it's not like i i want to like substitute going to a mormon church with going to a christian church never say never but i don't want to do that right now i think i'm trying to figure out my own like new beliefs without going to a church and listening to other people that's been the main thing i'm not trying to base my spirituality on other people's experiences I want to base it on my own experience and i've heard that like i heard a quote that said something like that religion is basing your faith and your spirituality on other people what they say and what they tell you and spirituality is having your own experience and that's always what i was seeking so hard for in the church was my own experience like i again would like read the scriptures and pray about them but i never felt peace the way that i wanted to i think with all of my content ever the only advice i would ever give you sure i can give advice here and there whatever for like what i would do but at the end of the day i want you to be you i i wouldn't i don't want you to make decisions that i would make like i want you to make your own decisions and that's been my ho whole spiritual journey too is like i'm making decisions for me they're not for anyone else they are for what feels right and connects with my soul that's it and i would never tell you how to live your life so i feel like i have just been trying really hard to like respect everyone's way of life and their path and their journey and whatever brings them peace and comfort and it's not it's not my life honestly it's not my life it's not my problem i just have to worry about myself and so that's where i'm at with that has your view on having kids changed did you ever feel a rush to have kids 100 percent, my perception of having kids has like changed a ton the past few years i used to feel more in a rush um which is crazy because i just turned 28 and even now i like don't really even feel that much in a rush like i feel so okay with where we're at and the fact that we don't have kids yet obviously you guys have know we've been trying to get pregnant for a while and i would love to have i would love to get pregnant this year that being said like when we first started trying i was um 24 and i because i was like oh i want to have my first kid when i'm 25 i was like oh that's fine that i didn't get pregnant when i'm 25 just when i'm 26 and then like i didn't get pregnant then 27 and then i started to feel very rushed i think when i was like 26 everyone has their own timeline of what they want and and to me i felt in a rush because i felt like i was behind a lot a lot of people i know were having kids a lot of my friends were having kids and getting pregnant and I, so i did feel in a rush but now i don't feel as much that way i think it's just because i have seen so many people like not even getting married till they're 32 and then like having kids and i'm just like i don't know it comforts me because i i realized that the small little area that i grew up that was highly religious it's not the whole world and a lot of people i think the we were sharing on a, a recent episode of our podcast that the like new um average age to become a mom is 30 and it used to be younger so that just it, it does comfort me and make me feel like i'm not like behind okay well since we're talking about kids we can get into the ivf thing so a lot of people are asking for an IVF update. I don't know if I told you guys this. I honestly can't remember if I've shared about this yet or if I've vlogged. Anyway, we had a consultation with IVF doctor and 
we feel really good about him about everything we haven't started yet but I we did get some testing done. We got genetic testing and blood work done. We're still waiting on the results of those That's just something you do before you start the whole process, but we don't have like a date that we're starting yet I wanted to get through the podcast tour because I, I can't be traveling I need to be at home for doing IVF and I was thinking about maybe holding off until after summer I do want to do IVF at some point this year. I don't have the exact like dates yet, but we have been doing testing we've been going to like meetings and stuff and i've been documenting it so i'll definitely share really excited someone literally asked this is making me laugh how's infertility how's your infertility going great no i'm feeling really hopeful i really am i'm a little nervous about doing ivf just because it's a process i don't know you're doing shots in your stomach every day it can be very hormonal and emotional so i have had my moments of just being a little nervous and like oh not dreading it because i'm very excited for the outcome and i feel very grateful that we can do this but it's obviously just not fun to have to like put needles in your body every day and be pumped with hormones and go under like for the egg retrieval it's like a little surgery type thing and anyway i'll keep you guys updated on that and hopefully by the end of the year we got a little bump i'm really really i really really hope so and i'm letting myself just say that and be hopeful are you scared to get pregnant or do you have any fears around pregnancy like getting sick you know what yes i definitely do have fears of getting pregnant but when i really am like in a good headspace i'm not that worried about it but it's just when i start overthinking that i start being like oh my gosh what if i get sick like what if i can't do this what if you know i fear of how my life will change but obviously this is something that i've wanted for a long time i actually was just thinking about this today that which like is rooted back to like religion and stuff. I've always had a lot of fears surrounding being a mom because I was worried that I like wouldn't be a good mom just because the way I grew up, I never connected with the verbiage surrounding like motherhood. It was always very self-sacrificing. Like you have to give up this, like you give up all your sleep, you give up all your independence. That's how you're a good mom. Like you just run yourself dry and that's how you're, how you're a good mom. And like that, honestly just to just to be transparent like that never sounded fun or exciting to me and so even it's funny because i felt like by waiting till i was like 25 to get pregnant i was like so old which is funny looking back but like that was my version of like waiting to get pregnant because i got married when i was 21 so we'd already been married for four years and i was like ready to start that chapter and and people were already always asking like why don't you why don't they want kids like why aren't they having kids um, in like my community. I always had these fears of like, well, if that's what it means to be a good mom, like I hope that I'm able to do that because I am, I really like being independent. I really like doing my own thing. And like, I'm seeing all these examples of good mothers and they're very, very like, they sacrifice everything for their kids. I think moms are literally incredible, but I just felt this like fear of like, but I, w I still want to have my own life. Like I want to have fun with my husband still. I don't want to you know what I mean? I, I just like saw this this narrative and I didn't connect with it very much. But now that I've even kind of discarded some of that, I feel even more excited to be a mom because I know that I will be like the best mom that I can be for my kids specifically. And I just believe that everything will like flow in the way it needs to flow. And so that's been like really comforting to me because it was, that was definitely a point of like, fear and contention for me do you still have your extensions no i do not and you guys my hair has grown so much it has gotten so long and i love it i feel like it's like perfect in time for summer because i really like having i really like having long hair honestly every time i get long hair like it grows and i want to just like chop it i feel like everyone does that but i feel like then i see what i would look like with short hair and i'm like i just feel like the long red hair is it for me right now not a question Wait, this is a question still. Not a question, but can you vlog more time with your friends? You have the best vibes. Was thinking about this recently because I love watching vlogs when people are out doing stuff. Ironic that I'm sitting in my house while filming this video, but like I love when people show their interactions with their friends and with their family and stuff. And I'm always like, I need to do that more. But then sometimes I just don't want to be the person that's always like filming. Do you know what I mean? I feel like my friends don't care i always ask like if i'm gonna vlog i'll ask them before i'll be like does anyone care if i film and every time they're like no we don't care at all um so i need to like just be better about showing like my fun times with my friends sometimes i forget and other times i just feel like we're having a lot of fun i don't want to like not kill the moment but stop and be like wait guys can i film this you know what i mean 
but I do want to show that more especially this summer because I just feel like we'll have a lot of like fun beach days and stuff so I'm gonna definitely work on showing more instead of telling on my YouTube videos because I think that that's like really fun to watch. How are you liking your chin implant? She was my best investment, 100%. I love, I, I'm like so happy that I did it. I am so incredibly happy. There's not been one day that I've regretted it or thought like, oh, should I have done that? Like it has made such a difference in my life, honestly. I feel so much more confident. I just, I, I love it. I hope that like, I don't have any, I don't know, like complications with it. I don't, I don't think I should, but I was just actually telling Leif like for the first time, it's been over a year. It's been like a year and a half almost, like a year and a few months. I feel comfortable like doing this and like fully resting my chin on my hand and it feels like my real chin, which is like, it's it always has felt like a little like numb and a little weird. And now I just feel completely like totally fine just resting on it and like it feels like a real a real piece of me so that's very interesting i think it'll just continue to probably feel like that for like the rest of my life but yeah we love miss chin in this household advice on having bad body confidence days this is so relatable and i think that's like the first important key key note is that i don't think i've ever met a girl who doesn't struggle with some sort of body image issues at some point in their life it, which is it makes me so sad because i just feel like as women we're so hard on ourselves and women's bodies are like just miraculous the things that we can do and just having a cycle like we go through so much honestly so it's we need to be easier on ourselves but i'm also saying that to myself because i definitely have my days too where i don't feel confident or i'm just like struggling with some certain aspect and this is like really hard to get to this point i'm still working on it for sure but just doing things for my body and for my mental health and my physical health that make me feel good and, and not focusing so much on how I look. And I know that's like the typical thing you always hear, but that's really what I try and do is just like, even when I was at Pilates this morning, I was thinking I am so proud of like my strength that I have now. And it's not even about like, I'm proud of the way this looks. It's like, sometimes I don't even honestly see that much specifically me like I don't see that many results sometimes like I feel like I'm pretty active and sometimes I'll be like shouldn't I be like in better shape looking wise but then I just reflect and I'm like but it doesn't matter because that's not why I work out and I know that's so cliche and it's so actually hard to get to that point I like I phase in and out of it like some days I'm literally like no I need to look better but when I'm kind of like still with myself, I'm like, but that's not the purpose of like working out and something so important that I remember I saw a quote that's like, no one will remember at the end of your life, like, oh yeah, her legs were kind of whatever. They remember you as a person and how you made them feel. And that's so important to remember, like you are your own biggest critic. No one cares if, you know, your arms don't look super perfect in an outfit or something like that's not what people remember about you. People remember your vivacious spirit and your fun energy and your laugh and your smile and your, like there's, you're so much more than your body. Your body does not like, it's not something to be picked apart and looked at. It's a vessel for you to live life through. So I am constantly trying to remind myself of that because I also, with any of my best friends, I would never in a million years focus on the things about their body. like anything about their body. I don't care. I don't care at all. I don't care what you eat. I don't care what you like. That does not affect my life. I just want to be around you if you're a fun person. And I think that's how most people feel. And if anyone is judging you for your body, you have to realize that is a complete reflection of themselves and things that they're going through. That has absolutely nothing to do with you. And again, it's so cliche, but I believe that with my whole heart. Like if someone is critiquing your body, they have their own issues internally with their own body or with how they were brought up. Just do things every day, make choices every day that align with you and that like help you get to your goals, whatever that is. And don't beat yourself up. Like if you're having a bad body confidence day, just it is what it is. Like sometimes I will literally say, or with like my skin, if I'm having like a bad skin day and I just have like a bunch of um, acne, I'm just like, you know, today's not my day with the skin. It is what it is. I don't try and be like, no, it's so pretty. Like, I'm just like, it is what it is. I don't love my skin today. And that'll fade. And in a few weeks, maybe it'll be a good skin day again. It's like life just goes in waves. Just kind of like let it flow and just be okay with the fact that there's ups and downs. I always say it's funny how like 
we expect life to go so perfectly and then when like something doesn't go our, our way we're shocked but it's like that's life like it's never gonna be completely perfect how you want it so you just have to kind of let let that vision go what is your diet like lately advice on maintaining balance so kind of on this whole like health and wellness subject um I don't have a specific like diet that I adhere to like I'm not vegan or anything like that. I've been trying to focus a little bit more on getting protein in lately, which I feel like has been maybe it's just on my TikTok for you page. A lot of people are talking about protein, but I do try and kind of have like a high protein diet. Other than that, honestly, I just kind of eat. I try and eat like intuitively just like what I feel like eating. We have this episode coming out about gut health soon on our podcast. Our guest was talking about how important it is to like diversify your foods that you eat. So you guys know me. I'm like a creature of habit with my foods. Like I literally will eat avocado toast and an iced chai latte, which I literally forgot about. Oops. Um, every day and be happy. But sometimes it's fun to switch it up. And I also have been making that green juice a lot of mornings. Like I'll make that honestly like five times a week, um, which again, ironically is like the same ingredients every day, but whatever. Maybe, you know, sometimes I switch it up, put some protein powder in it, do like a different fruit. Uh, but I've shown that green juice recipe a lot. That's like a super easy way to get greens in and get, you know, some healthy, healthy stuff in your body first thing in the morning and it tastes really good. I've also been trying to not eat as much sugar, like processed sugar, just honestly, mostly for my skin. Unfortunately, it does help and I still do eat or like drink sugary things sometimes, but just not as much. But what I was gonna say is it also, it makes me crave sweets less, which is like so typical, but when I'm eating a little bit less processed sugar, I don't want it as much, which is annoying that it works because I'm like a very, I have a major sweet tooth, but I still do like satisfy those sweet cravings all the time, just with like, things with a little less sugar, you know? What items do you feel are worth splurging on and items that you can just find thrifting? I love this question. The things that I'm willing to splurge on are basics. So like really good jeans, good tank tops like this, and honestly good loungewear. Cause a lot of times loungewear is hard, harder to find for me thrifting because it's like a little bit ratty or like beat up kind of, like it's very worn in. I like to have really good basic neutrals like tank tops, t-shirts, and like a few solid pants, like a pair of black pants or black jeans, um, light wash jeans, dark wash, like a few solid pants or shorts options and some solid neutral base pieces. And then I feel like it's so fun to thrift for like those fun things that you're not just gonna find anywhere. And don't get me wrong, if you find like the perfect pair of like vintage jeans or something, that's amazing. I just. Usually I feel like don't have great luck with that and I have better luck finding like just cute little like, oh, this pink top or you know what I mean? Like things that are unique that I wouldn't be able to find everywhere that are like more pops of color or fun patterns or things like that. And I think it makes your outfit look kind of well put together when there's items of like both old and new. And honestly, I'm kind of the same with home decor. Like a lot of my staple bigger pieces are um, like this is the Restoration Hardware Cloud Couch that you guys know we've had for like five years probably and it's still like so comfy. The pieces that I thrift, like this art was thrifted on the wall. Um, and I have a lot of just like trinkets, like little things that were thrifted. Like I have this little um, tray that I have like coasters. Um, these coasters aren't thrifted, but um, for like our remotes and stuff. And this little tray I got at like a consignment store. So I like looking for like little things like our, our shelf over there. Um, that I've shown you guys probably like a million times has just a bunch of books and little like jars and pots and things and like a lot of that stuff was thrifted but the shelves themselves are actually from Ikea but um, they're not thrifted is the point. So yeah, I feel like just finding like little things is kind of fun. Does shopping ever make you sad? Sometimes I get sad when I shop too much. Weird question. That's actually not a weird question at all and it's super relatable and yes, I actually do feel that. And let me break it down for you. Sometimes when I'm feeling the most stressed out about money or something is when I shop the most, which is very twisted and backwards. But I think that sometimes when you are feeling overwhelmed or stressed, like a way that you can take that out is, is literally like retail therapy is shopping. The worst part is like a lot of times it doesn't make you feel better. So you'll, if you literally sometimes if I'm having like an overwhelming or stressful day, I'll find myself online shopping and I'm like, 
this is not like the answer and also i'm gonna be more stressed out when i have like more things in my house like I'm feeling overwhelmed. I want to get rid of stuff. Why am I like shopping for things? You know what I mean? Something that I do a lot actually is like if I randomly just go on a website and like add a bunch of stuff to my cart, I will wait 24 hours at least and I'll go back to the the website and like what I've favorited or like what I put in my cart and reevaluate and half the time I'm like, I don't want any of that. Like I want one one of the those things I want and like I've been thinking about. All the rest of those, I do like I don't care. And it's kind of a good way. I mean, some stuff like on certain websites, I know you have to like be fast and order it, whatever. But a lot of times I think it's good. Like if you want to even just get it out of your system and like go online shopping, put a bunch of stuff in your cart, just wait a second to purchase it. Because sometimes if you just purchase stuff like that on a whim, you get it all and you don't, you're like, this doesn't even like make me happy. And I feel more stressed out now. And I feel more sad because I realized that like buying that stuff did not, do anything for my it did not make me happy which like i thought it was maybe going to what camera do i use for vlogging it's the camera that i'm using right now um it is the canon m50 mark ii i have a lens on the camera that does not come with the camera you have to buy it separately and put it on so it has like a detachable lens like the one it comes with is just the generic one and then i attached this new lens to it took the old one off the lens I have is the 11 to 22 millimeter and it goes wider. So I have some friends that have this camera, but they don't have this same lens. And like, it looks like probably like this, like this is the widest they can go with it. For vlogging, especially like for when you're sitting down, you can like back up a little bit. But for when you're vlogging, like I like to just have things be wider. I don't know, um, especially when I'm like holding the camera. So that's why I got this um, lens but it's such a great camera like it's really really high quality and worth it i've used it for like i don't know four year three or four years this maybe this mark ii was like a new version that i bought i don't remember but i've used this like camera setup for years and i just love it it's a little bit like not bulky but if you have like the g7x that a lot of people have that one's really good honestly if you want to start vlogging or something but this one is like better quality it's more expensive i think too um, and it's a little bigger, but I really like it. I, I've thought about getting the G7X actually just to like when I'm on the go because sometimes putting this thing in, if I don't have like a bigger bag, it's a little bit annoying. Um, but it's not huge. I think it's worth it. Like the quality is worth it. But I also just use my, my phone to vlog a lot. Like if I don't have my camera and I just want to vlog some like uh, b-roll footage kind of stuff. I'll just use my phone. If you have an iPhone, honestly, that's like good enough. Respectfully, I need to know how your smile looks so different from your old photos. Um, Invisalign. <laughs> Invisalign and lip filler. That's what it is. You know what the main thing is, is lip filler because when I did not have any filler, my, um, lip was, I did not have a top lip basically. And so it went up so much, like it showed so much more gum because my, I had like no lip. So I feel like that's probably why my smile looks different from like old photos but honestly just like growing up lip filler and i did have um invisalign so my teeth are like much straighter now too i'm gonna end on this question because it's cute and sweet what in your life are you the most proud of i love you that's really sweet i'm really proud of especially this past year my mindset i feel a lot more aware and like connected to myself this year than i ever have and i just feel very happy about that because obviously like i was mentioning at the beginning there was a like time period where i felt like i was like conflicting like living not that i was like living a fake life but just like living a life that wasn't connecting with like my desires and my true feelings and i think i'm really doing that now and like it's hard sometimes and I don't have like a perfect trajectory where I'm just like, life is so awesome and perfect now. Like there's plenty of things that I are mistakes I make, but I think overall my mindset is so much stronger now. And actually ironically part of like having this like strong connection to myself and having like a strong mindset is that I'm actually like softer and easier on myself because I have grown up being very critical of myself and super super hard on just everything i do and i think that it's led me to some good things in life because i'm like i do work hard for the things that i want but this past year i've realized that strength is also sometimes like softness and you don't always have to be super hard on yourself you can also appreciate 
just like everything that life brings to you. I'll always be evolving and I love that. I think we're all always evolving. I have felt such a change in myself the past little bit and I'm proud of that because that's always how I wanna be in this life. I always wanna be changing and growing. And so to kind of like see physical, like when I, literally my chin, I'm like my physical change, no, but like to see old videos, I'm not even talking about the way I look like, literally my energy, my aura, the way I'm speaking, like everything, I feel very different now. And I think that that's a good thing. I think that sometimes it's cringy. It's cringy to look back on old things that you've done. It's so cringy for me to like, listen to old podcast episodes or like hear these things because I'm like, I don't think that anymore. I don't know. But also that's a good sign. I think that we should be cringed out by the old version of ourselves. Like if that means you're growing, that means you're evolving. Like you don't need to stay the same forever. So I'm proud of myself for allowing that, allowing that kind of change. And like, I'm always gonna be continuing to do that. And I think I'll look back at this video in five years and hopefully I'll cringe at it. That's truly my goal because I always wanna be just like leveling up and just being, you know, changing my thoughts and opinions and, and growing up. So yeah thank you guys so much for watching thank you for all your really good questions make sure to subscribe to my youtube channel if you guys want to be updated on like new vlogs and the ivf journey everything that we got going on and if you want to follow me on instagram it's at jc marie smith same with tiktok lady has just been chilling this entire time listening to us chat i love you guys so much and i'll see you soon bye